This conference will now be recorded. So, Deepa, if you remember last day, we had learned about kinematic equations. Mainly, we had derived some four kinematic equations. I'll just make you recap a bit. I'll just write down the equations first. Then we will see today. We will see applications of kinematic equations. How we can apply to our various physical problem. These problems are actually day-to-day -day life problem. The first equation was the final velocity. You will be able to find out at any time, any instant of time. If you know the initial velocity, and if you know the acceleration. Of the motion so using this equation okay I'll just keep this as v0 so this this is the v0 is the initial velocity okay then we have learned how to calculate the displacement at any time displacement is denoted by s if you know the initial velocity v0 and the acceleration then you can apply this formula v0 into 8 v0 into t plus half a t square a is the acceleration and this see i'm writing just plus thinking that a or the acceleration is positive if the acceleration is negative then you can apply here negative so it can be plus or minus both then if you have initially some displacement already had happened if that is s0 so this expression can be again modified as s is equal to s0 plus this term v0 t plus or minus 1 plus a t square like this okay and the last equation third equation was v square is equal to initial velocity is the velocity at any instant of time v square so you can you can write v0 square minus or plus plus or minus 2 into acceleration into the displacement if you know the displacement acceleration and initial velocity you can find out the final velocity of the motion <clears throat> and the last equation is the fourth equation this is actually if you know initial velocity and the acceleration of the motion you can find out displacement at any particular instant of time like suppose sth is so suppose we want to calculate displacement at nth second of any time duration okay nth second nth second so we denote this as sn and see this sn will be written as initial velocity plus acceleration if this is minus then you can find uh, you can write here minus also initial velocity plus or minus this is the acceleration by 2 into 2n minus 1 this is the nth second suppose fifth second fourth second third second okay those things so if it is fourth we'll write four in place of n so these four fundamental equations of kinematics will be using to analyze various motions in our day-to-day -day life and these equations are valid for one dimension we are learning for one dimension now but it this can be valid for any dimension but in that case we'll be learning that we'll be 
applying these equations to each and every direction individually and then we can combine the motion okay we can combine after calculating the desired parameters we can combine them okay so this is somewhat recap now see we'll be applying these equations to analyze few real life problems like see one is stopping distance so this stopping distance is the distance before a car stops like the distance traveled by the car or any vehicle so the distance traveled by the vehicle before it stops i'll just tell you the story like i'll just give you the full picture of this stopping distance suppose you are driving a car and it has velocity the vehicle has velocity some 50 50 km per hour okay 50 km per hour so suppose you somehow you need to stop the car you need to stop the car so what you do is you apply brakes right you apply brakes but as you start applying brake it will immediately will not stop it will not stop immediately rather it will travel up to uh, travel a distance suppose you start applying brake over here it will travel a distance certain distance okay suppose that is ds okay ds after traveling this much distance it will stop here so the distance you travel before you your vehicle stops completely that distance is called actually stopping distance i'll just repeat once again the stopping distance is the distance traveled by a car before it stops so suppose the situation demand demands you to stop the car you start applying brakes and before your car really stops you are already traveling a distance after even even after applying brake suppose at this a point you starts applying brake and you stop where you stop at b so the distance between a and b is called the stopping distance okay so this stopping distance will be finding out a numerical relationship between the stopping distance initial velocity and the deceleration so applying applying brake means what it is giving a negative acceleration which is called deceleration okay when you you increase your speed that time acceleration works when you stops the car by applying a brake brake is actually giving you deceleration okay which is reducing your speed to zero okay acceleration helps you to increase your velocity deceleration helps you to reduce your velocity to zero okay so let us try to derive an derive a mathematical equation look here we have we will be using this third equation v square is equal to here u means initial velocity so v square is equal to we know initial velocity u u zero square and, and here as i said if the acceleration is negative then you can apply negative 2 as here your as is suppose ds ds is the stopping distance stopping distance means what the distance traveled by a vehicle before it stops okay so in this case you look you are stopping the car that means your final velocity this is going to be zero and what is this initial velocity this you know the velocity this velocity is actually the velocity
when brake is applied okay brakes is brake brake is applied okay when the brake starts applying okay so, so you you are, you are applying the brake so at that moment what is the velocity if it is 50 km per hour or or 60 km per hour that particular velocity is called initial velocity in this case okay so the time when you start applying brake the amount of velocity you have or the speed you have is called the initial speed or initial velocity now you are stopping it to zero so velocity the final speed or the velocity will be zero so i'll be putting it there so this is zero so i get v0 square minus 2 a ds okay this is ds now if you just simplify it what you get is kind of this okay so you will get the stopping distance from here to here love so stopping distance you get v0 square initial velocity square divided by 2a that is the acceleration or the deceleration the brake shoe gives okay so you can see the stopping distance depends on two factors one is this one v initial velocity that means the velocity you have when you start applying brakes if suppose the velocity is two times velocity suppose v0 prime is 2 v0 so you will see that your stopping distance will be fourth time greater than earlier okay if suppose you have your initial speed n v0 v0 prime means n v0 it will give you n square ds so oh sorry n square yes n square ds your stopping distance will be multiplied by the square of this uh, n square okay n square it will be multiplied by n square i hope you are understanding if my velocity is n time times the earlier then your stopping distance will be n square times the earlier distance okay so there are two factors as i said one is the initial velocity from which like uh, at at what condition you start applying the brake that means in initial velocity and the second thing is what is the condition for your condition of your brake shoes that means how much deceleration your brake shoe can give if it it if it gives more then your stopping distance will be less if you know that your brake shoes are little bit loose they cannot give enough deceleration even while riding cycle also will do it like if you see some something in front you start applying your brakes from far okay if suppose your brake shoes are very nice as soon as you apply without going much distance you can stop your cycle bicycle then we apply near the obstacle okay so you can solve problems using this this equations okay so this is stopping distance we have learned now we, we can learn one more thing stopping time so how much time it takes to stop so that is the stopping time suppose you start applying brake and how long it takes to stop the car okay that is called actually stopping time we'll derive that so stopping time can be derived from this equation the first equation so look here so v is equal to v0 minus at we'll be applying this as i said plus minus this depends on the 
sine of the acceleration if it is a deceleration then it will be minus acceleration means it will be positive here now see my final velocity is anyway going to be zero so i can just simplify to find out the time t is equal to v0 initial velocity divided by the acceleration so initial speed or initial velocity is very very important okay and this stopping distance and stopping times these are actually a very much important parameters when one more parameters will be learning that is reaction time these parameters are very much important in road safety these are real life problems so and it, these are very interesting to learn okay so if time permits we'll take a few numerical examples later now we'll just learn vertical motion so last day i had started with vertical motion but we could not take up real life example to solve using kinematic equations so today i'll be taking up few examples so before i start taking example let me tell you about vertical motion so in the vertical motion we know uh you have an object suppose and you drop it and in this case so there are few things you need to note is that if you if this object is actually just just left from certain height it will fall under gravity gravity means it will experience an acceleration due to gravity and that is denoted by g and you need to know that the sign of g or the gravitation so the, the acceleration due to gravity is always acting downward so sometime we will see that some some person is just throwing a stone upward so your motion or initial velocity is in the upward direction where as your acceleration due to gravity is down so in this case you have to take g as minus while you are dropping something and it is falling under gravity you have to take g as positive okay so because your motion is downwards and acceleration also is the downward direction anyway so these things you have to again uh while solving problem you have to keep in mind all right so now let us see what is called free fall see if we drop any object any object suppose this is a this is at certain height from the ground it is at certain height from the ground suppose this is suppose this is a and this point is b okay so if the object is dropped from near the earth surface okay not very far from the earth surface if the height suppose your earth surface is here if the height is this one this is h suppose you drop the object from here and if this height is much much less than the radius of the earth then what we take is we take this implies that you can take g as constant constant otherwise g varies with height you take g as constant okay otherwise g can vary with height g can vary with depth etc so if the height so this is called actually near the earth surface and in that case if the air resistance is neglected air resistance is neglected
if the air resistance is neglected then the object falls to totally under gravity under gravity okay and this kind of motion is called free fall okay free fall so in this case we can write the equations of motion so as i said when you are dropping some object from there if the resistance is not air resistance is neglected then there is nothing to give you obstructions against the motion of the object from top to bottom or to the earth surface now suppose the object has some initial velocity or suppose here in this case we will take a simplest case that there is no initial velocity initial velocity is zero then what is the time it takes from uh, takes to reach to ground so suppose this is the height h so what is the time taken by the object to reach to the ground so you can apply formula for see you know you know this s is equal to ut or sorry this is v0 t that is initial velocity v0 t plus half g t square here instead of a will be taking the acceleration due to gravity and t is the time since since here we have taken v0 is 0 and a says h so you can write h is equal to half g and t square so this is the equation for free fall equation of motion for free fall h is equal to half g t square if you know the height then you know how much time it takes to reach to the ground okay now i'll just talk about upward motion suppose you have an object over here you're just giving some certain initial velocity v0 and throwing upwards so your g is downward okay g is downward so how much height it will rise how to find out that if you know the initial velocity you know the object will rise the highest height and there it will stop like until it stop it will move upward and where it stops its velocity final velocity is going to be zero why why velocity is reducing because your acceleration due to gravity is acti acting against this velocity we know final velocity is equal to v0 plus or minus a into t if your a is negative which is here g so look the velocity at any instant of time is going to be reduced by g into t g times t okay g times t and then it will lose its velocity initial velocity suppose was 50 meter per second it will lose at each and every instant and when it reaches a maximum height reaches a maximum height h max there the final velocity is going to be zero it is not going to be further upward okay so that is that is the concept of highest uh, like maximum height what is the concept the concept is that the final velocity at that maximum height will be zero okay it will be zero so how long it will take to reach to the maximum height you can find out your time v0 by g okay like that you can find it out like that or if suppose you are not given the height you can 
So you you have to find out what is the H max it would rise uh, rise. You can use your formula that is b square is equal to b zero square minus two g h max. So at h max b is equal to zero. If you apply that, then you will get c h max will be b zero square in initial velocity square divided by two g. Okay. So what we have learned here. For a free fall, h is equal to half g t square. Okay. And suppose here velocity initial velocity was zero. What is the maximum velocity? It attains just before hitting the ground. It will be. It will be actually. Uh, okay. So here, okay, this thing I will not teach you here. Because it is coming under work power energy, anyway. But you can do one thing: the maximum velocity. If you want to find out, you need to find first find out what is the time. Okay, then you can find out v is equal to v zero plus a t. All right, a means here g. And if you draw, if you just throw any object, it will rise. And what is the h max? That you can find out from this ex, uh, expression. That is your V zero square by two g. Okay, so these are the few formulas. Okay, now we'll take up one numerical example. Let us see how we can solve. So, suppose a ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity twenty meter per second from the top of a multi-storey building. That means here, suppose this is multi-storey building. Okay, from here, from the top of multi-storey building, one ball is thrown upward. Ball is thrown upward. Suppose this is your A point A. From where you have thrown, this is your B, and this is your C at the ground. Now this, the height of the point from where the ball is thrown. Is 25 meter. That means this is 25 meter from the ground. How long will the ball? Sorry, how high the ball will rise? So this is the first question. How high the ball will rise? That means you have to find out the maximum height it will rise. So you have been given initial velocity v0 from here a to b. Suppose a from a, the object is thrown or the ball is thrown with a velocity 20 meter per second. This is the initial velocity, and you have been asked to find out how high. So the height, if you want to measure from a to b, you can find out this formula. Like, see, as I said, h max you can use. Final velocity will be zero, so you can find out v zero square by two g using this formula. You'll find out how much height it will rise. Okay, so this is from A to B. If you ask me from ground how much is the distance, so we'll just solve it here. So suppose g will be taking as ten meter per second square. So v zero square means twenty. Meter square, twenty meter per second square, two into ten, ten, twenty. So you get actually here twenty meter. So this is the maximum height. That means the length of this A to B. Now, if you have been asked to find out the maximum height from the ground, then you have to add this twenty-five. So actually, the height will be from the ground is so height capital H is equal to twenty-five meter plus. Small h max, that is from a b height a b, so that is 20. So you will find out this as 45 meter. So the, from the ground it is 45 meter. Just a minute. Excuse me for the inconvenience. Okay. Uh, 
so we have got how long sorry how high we can the ball can rise that is actually 45 meters from the ground or 20 meters from the multi storey building okay all right so this is uh, about this problem another point is there how long will it be before the ball hits the ground that means how long it will be there in the air before it's it is hitting the ground i'll just tell you this problem can be solved in two ways suppose i know now what is the height so suppose this, this is the b this is a over here so the ball goes from a to b uh just excuse me for one minute i'll just mute it for one minute because there are storm i have to just close my window yeah so i'm back here the problem is that you have to find out the time before the ball hits the ground okay so the total time it is in the air you have to find out that time so you have thrown the ball from a it is going h max from here we know that is 20 meter okay and it reaches to so it it is like it is coming like this okay like this it goes here and then comes back to ground you have to find out the time how long it will be there in the air you can just actually break this problem into two problems one is that the time it takes to reach the highest point that is b a to b so you can do one thing you can use v is equal to v0 minus at you can use this formula so you know the final velocity is going to be zero so a sorry you will find out t is equal to v0 by a that means if you no this is actually v0 is 20 meter per second and this is 10 meter per second square so you will get this as 2 second so up to this it is 2 second okay 2 seconds one part of this problem and the second part you can think that the object is freely falling it is falling freely under gravity from b to c point okay if this is c point here b to c point we know the total height now so this is capital h which is to here 20 meter h max and this is 25 so you know this height is 45 meter now you can use the formula that h is equal to initial velocity into time plus half g c square you can use this formula okay and then you can find out the time let us see how we can find out i'll just write this equation with the values known values here look here so h is actually 45 meter then your initial velocity into time plus half into 10 into Time square again, t square. So we'll just 
simplify it a bit so five if you just strike from all over so you get actually here nine okay so it will be i'll just writing i'll be writing this as t square my uh, minus or oh, sorry this is plus this is four t and minus nine okay yeah we are right so we have to <clears throat> solve it so if we solve it we will get another time okay so i think there is some mistake we'll just figure it out oh i'm sorry here actually the initial velocity we have to think as b we have started from b so initial velocity is zero i'm sorry i'll just repeat this calculation so when i am thinking the second motion free fall free fall that means you have to take this v0 as zero there is no motion because when it goes from a to b at this point it stops okay it it loses its all velocities and it stops for a while and then it comes back actually okay and initial velocity while dropping from here like this is free fall initial velocity is zero so 45 is equal to half gt square you have to have there so this is your 10 t square so this is 5 so you'll find out that t square is equal to 9 over here and t is equal to plus or minus 3 but time cannot be negative as of now we'll be taking this time as positive so you get two times one so in the split so t one is t1 is t second two second and t2 is three seconds so total time is five seconds it will be there in the ar before it hits the ground it will take total time actually five seconds i'll just repeat it so this problem can be solved in two ways how long it will be there in the ar before it hits the ground one is you can break this uh, this problem into two parts one two parts one is this one that you are throwing the object here the ball from a upwards so from a you are throwing the ball from a so you have already found out what is the maximum height it can rise that will come in our use here so first you just apply b is equal to u0 minus at anyway the final velocity at b will be zero at the highest point so from there you can find out one time so this is t1 suppose and now we'll be considering a free fall from b to directly c or the ground from b point to ground will be thinking a free fall so that time your initial velocity is zero no longer it is 20. okay so if you write that so this will be actually h h max you have to find out the height from the ground to the highest point b so which is 45 meter over here so 45 meter is equal to so the second part i was doing this is b this is a so this is your 20 meter this is 25 meter so 45 meter is equal to half g t square g is 10 so it will be so t square will be 9 and t will be plus or minus 3 seconds so we have to always take time as positive so we get t2 is equal to so it's this is actually the free fall from b to c this is the time it takes and t1 it takes two seconds to rise the maximum height up to b so these two times if you add t1 and t2 you will get five seconds okay so you will get five seconds
okay one more tri one more way is there to solve this problem i'll be discussing that okay so Deep, am I audible to you so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Just a minute. I'll just uh, reset the screen. There is some problem in the screen. Just for a while. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, my screen is not responding. Just uh, I'm sorry for that. I'm just trying to fix it out. I'll reset the screen so that it it acts. So, okay, Deepa, so we were here. So, this problem we had already discussed. There is another method actually to solve this problem. I'll just tell you one more way to solve this problem. So, this part is all right. So, second part, we can use the previous method, like you can just split the problem into two from A to B. Okay, one motion. Another free fall, you can apply B to C or B to ground. Okay, that is what one method. Another method was you can think that see we, we know this formula that S minus S zero is equal to initial velocity into T plus a half G T square. Sorry, half a T square. So this will be plus or minus according to your acceleration. So th since the object was thrown object was thrown from this multi storage building a which is 25 meter from the ground so this is zero is actually 25 meter okay now it is 25 meter so this is my initial height is zero initial velocity has been given 20 meter per second okay now you have to find out when like how long it will be there in the air before it like it goes from height then comes back to ground again before it hits the ground how long it takes what is the time will be 
treating this problem now a single problem just by applying this formula like see we know the initial velocity we know the acceleration acceleration a is here minus g minus g because g always acts downward now our motion has started from here upward direction we are just throwing the ball so we'll be taking g as minus uh, sorry a as minus g and s s is the final displacement final displacement from the ground it is zero initial displacement from the ground it is s zero that is 25 and final will be taking as zero now you can find out the time from here look i'll be treating this final displacement s is equal to zero s zero is the initial displacement from the ground it is 25 meter initial velocity 20 meter per second square a second and a will be taking as minus g okay so now we can write from here this is 25 0 minus 25 this is 20 into 2 we have to find out t half into g into t square okay so if you just bring all of them together so and let us write so g by 2 into t square and this is minus 20 minus 25 is equal to 0 okay if you simplify a bit again from here look you will get t square minus 40 and here it will be minus 5 so look here what we can do is we can just solve this problem t square just factorize it so 5t minus 1t sorry minus t again this is minus is equal to 0 and you will see you will solve it here t minus 5 and this will be so if you just take t so t minus 5 and here minus t sorry minus 1 if you take you get so t minus 5 again here so ultimately if you just solve this you'll get t is equal to look this t will be plus so you will get actually one t will be t is equal to 5 another t will be t is equal to minus 1 so this minus 1 we should not take okay so then you have to take this t is equal to 5 if you just solve this problem like this equation then you can get this is a by uh, quadratic equation and quadratic equation you know how to solve it either you can factorize this or like this or you can just apply uh, the formula to find out the root of this okay all right so this is how you can so i hope you have got the concept and this is the easiest way to do you need not bother about the final height and all those things okay like how much height it uh, like it goes and then how much it is coming down those things you don't have to bother at a single stroke you can solve this problem in this way okay so now we'll go to another real life situation or real life problem that is reaction time see this react time reaction time is also a very very much important factor in our road safety etc so what is reaction time i'll just give you a real situation suppose you are driving a car and many a times we have seen that any animals like cow or dogs or sometimes like some person also comes just near your vehicle so that time immediately you have to apply your brakes and then stop the car to avoid the accident 
so in this kind of situation you need to react or act very quickly but always you have seen to react quickly you need to have a good response time or reaction time what is reaction time suppose you see something then you feel to or you have to actually think that what to do and then you do the action so these three things happen in this case what happens three things once you see first you see then you think that you have to stop the vehicle then you start applying the brake and that takes some time as you know stopping time to stop the vehicle so these three things actually take some time so this time so suppose you see then you think and then you act according to the situation it takes some time this is called tr or t response or response time or reaction time so this reaction time actually depends on various factors one is the condition of the driver if he is drunk he cannot respond immediately right he cannot think what to do second thing is action while doing the action here how is your brake how is your brake what is the speed initial speed and how is the condition of the road condition of the road so these are a few factors which are actually involved in reaction time so if you ask me to find out your reaction time then we can just do a simple experiment or demonstration to find out any one reaction time whether it is 0.1 second 0.2 second or whatever so look here i think i'll just give me a second i'll just enlarge this figure i'll just delete this particular okay just a now i hope you will be able to see it properly okay look this is a ruler suppose this is a meter scale or ruler whatever you can take this is a ruler okay all right i'll just share the screen how now is it visible i hope it is visible to you now right okay i'm sorry actually i had uh, like there was a problem in the screen so i had to reshare but i forgot it i don't know it it was like i think it it had been some 10 minutes i am just uh, like i am just writing in the screen then that will be missing yeah i was actually i did not realize it anyway but that problem was already discussed earlier now this is a new problem which you can see now so so i was discussing about reaction time as i said if you ride ride a vehicle sometime situation demands you to immediately stop your car if somebody comes nearby or in front of your vehicle so that time three things you do you see things 
then you think then you act according to the situation okay action so all three things take some time so if you add the time you take to see think and action like act according to that so the the total time is actually called response time or reaction time this reaction time depends on as i said the driver the situations like brakes how your brakes are what is the situation of, of the road whether it is muddy or whether it is slippery or something like that so this react reaction time is very 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 important in our road safety kind of those situations so look here if you want to know your response time you can do one demonstrations like this you have a scale ruler here okay you hold in between your four finger and thumb finger as you can see from here okay and you ask your friend you ask your friend so in the beginning it was not the situation suppose the ruler was just in the beginning okay you just give the way through your thumb finger and your four finger for the ruler to fall through it and you ask your friend to just drop it through that hole okay or the space between your four finger and thumb finger now what you need to do is as soon as your friend drop it between that those two fingers you try to hold it as soon as possible okay as soon as your friend is dropping it you have to hold it or stop the ruler to fall through it so if you are able to hold it after holding it you can find out that how much distance it has it had already traveled suppose this is your d okay d before you hold it it had already traveled some distance this is d suppose this was actually in your book it is written in the ncert book this is some 21 cm it already passed so you have to find out what is your reaction time so to find out reaction time you have to so this is a pre fall your friend is just dropping it he is not giving any force so initial velocity is zero fine okay so what you have to do here you have to use this formula h is equal to half g t square this is the formula for free fall and you look this h is actually your d over here so you can find out reaction time tr is equal to 2d by g 2d by g this is under root 2g by g okay so this is your reaction time in this case okay so this is how you can estimate the reaction time now you can you can see how after how much distance this ruler has passed you have just caught the ruler you put it here and g you can take 9.8 meter per second square or maybe 10 and that's how you can find out the reaction time for yourself okay so i think it is already 5:15 i am not going to start a new chapter a new uh, topic now actually another topic is remaining is is the relative motion in one dimension if i start it it will take another maybe 15 minutes but you may have class deeper right so i'll stop it here for today
actually uh, i'm really sorry for the inconvenience uh, it happened during see there is a thunderstorm going on outside so i had to stop one minute in between and also there was a problem with the screen i had to uh, like i forgot to share the screen otherwise things was like uh, whatever we had discussed do you have any questions in that Deepa, do you have any questions in that? Then we, I can explain you. Okay, so you don't have any question. All right. Okay, then I'll stop it here. Then we'll meet again on tuesday that day what we'll do we'll just take up few more numerical examples related to this kinematics this part motion in a straight line before that i'll discuss the relative motion part again and then i'll just take up few more examples because this part is very much very very important for competitive exam as well all right so this is called kinematics part kinematics first chapter we had already discussed motion in a straight line or motion in one dimension that is the first chapter in kinematics another chapter is there motion is in a plane that is also coming under this kinematics okay so all right bye for today